Let's talk about hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. So hyperkalemic periodic paralysis is characterized by episodic muscle weakness. Most cases are hereditary and will have a autosomal dominant inheritance with nearly complete penetrance. The relevant gene mutations occur on SCN4A on chromosome 17q23 and this affects the sodium channel in the skeletal muscle. So what will happen is that the sodium channel will close too slowly and over depolarize the muscle which can lead to stiffness, myotonia, and paralysis. And this sodium influx also triggers potassium release from the muscle, hence hyperkalemia can occur. For clinical features, the symptoms typically start in the first decade of life. It's characterized by repetitive attacks of generalized weakness that will last minutes to hours, although sometimes the weakness is focal. There is no loss of consciousness and respiratory function is typically spared as well. These episodes can be induced by cold environments, resting after exercise, fasting, anesthesia, and hyperkalemia. Features on exam that can be seen, and this can be interictally, can include myotonia, as well as later in life there may be myopathic weakness of the legs. For evaluation, an EKG is done to exclude a long QT or QU interval, which is suggestive of a different syndrome, Anderson syndrome. And if the EKG happens to be done during an episode, it may show peaked T waves, characteristic of hyperkalemia, and seen by the arrow. The potassium level, if it is drawn during an attack, it could be normal or elevated and CK can also be mildly elevated. On EMG, you can see myotonia in about half of patients, and you can also see reduced evoked motor amplitudes after 30 minutes of exercise. Lastly, for con confirmation of the diagnosis, a genetic test for SCN4A mutations can be sent. For treatment, episodes of muscle weakness can be observed or treated with thiazide diuretics, albuterol, or just mild exercise or sugar. For prophylaxis, strenuous activity should be avoided or followed by a cool down period of mild exercise. A low potassium and high carbohydrate diet can also help in avoiding triggering these spells as hyperkalemia can make it worse. Preventatives also include carbonic anhydrase inhibitors such as dichlorphenamide and acetazolamide as well as hydrochlorothiazide. For surgery it should be noted that opioids and depolarizing agents may worsen myotonia. For surveillance potassium levels should be checked as well as thyroid function testing, and for weakness of the legs, an MRI should be done as well. For prognosis, the episodes tend to become less frequent over the decades, and they're most frequent in the teens and 20s, and they become less frequent later on in life, middle-aged and in elderly patients, and eventually disappear. Um, as the episodes improve, myopathic weakness of the legs may develop. 